For years, Ghana's political system has been shaped by the dominance of two main parties, the New Patriotic Party, the NPP, and the National Democratic Congress, the NDC. In the upcoming elections, now only about 19 days and 17 hours away, 11 other political parties and independent candidates hope to break the mold. And a duopoly that has existed since 1992 at the very start of this fourth republic. My next guest on Hot Issues is one of four independent candidates who are on what many describe as an impossible quest. The question then is, will he succeed? I am Kemeni Amano, and in this edition, I sit with a man who has unforgivingly criticized the establishment over its inefficiencies and deep-rooted corruption. He wants change, but not just any change, a complete overhaul of Ghana. Can he manage this country? And can he deliver the Ghana everyone wants? My guest is independent presidential candidate, Kofi Kuranting. Kofi, you're welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you. Why are you in the race, despite what appears to be a loss ahead of you? A loss? I don't understand. When I'm, you say a loss, what do you mean? Do you, you still think you could win the election? Trump won. Everybody thought it was a loss, right? He won. So, and plus, you have to understand, Kimini, Ghana is a different country today. People are more conscious. People have been exposed to a lot more needs have changed, times are harder. All these conditions drive people to a point where they snap in terms of decision making. And then they allow for something that is unusual to happen by virtue of life. And that's what's going to happen in 2024. I see. And have you done any research to back this? Because the polls that we see do not even put you in the top four. And the reason is because nobody wants to accommodate me because everybody knows that uh, it will make everybody else look bad. Hmm. Um, it's strategic and psychological not to include me in the polls because why wouldn't they sit and have a debate? Nobody wants to debate me. That I, I'm coming on your show and I'm asking... If I'm um, that irrelevant, let's sit down and have a debate and show Ghana how we could solve the problems of Ghana. Nobody wants to debate. Ask them to come to your show and let's debate. It would be the best thing to do to actually tell Ghanaians how you're going to solve the problems of today. How we're going to get rid of the 760 billion CD debt. How we're going to move from being at 84.9% uh, uh, debt to GDP, how our prime rate is 13.5%. Uh, how do you borrow money? How do you start businesses? How do you turn this economy around? Nobody wants to answer that. Everybody wants to talk about promises. We're gonna do this, give you free money, give you free refrigerators and stoves, and that's what I wanna talk about because People are so tight in their lives that mm. they like to hear nonsense like that sometimes. You see? But you're making promises too, aren't you? It's not a promise. What, what would you call it's what definitive. you say to the people? Well, it, listen, we're going to change the Constitution. If you don't change the Constitution, you can't get anything done correctly in Ghana. It's a fact. Nobody talks about that. I'm the only one who talks about that. Change the Constitution, eradicate corruption. You know where corruption is right now? Community, it's three to four billion dollars by their numbers. By their numbers. That means three to four billion in the last 32 years of a failed MDC MPP administrations, that's 96 billion dollars. 96 billion. And then we turn around and go to IMF for three billion. Is that not a joke? Tell me. Mm. So that's why they don't want to sit and have a conversation with me because they know I'm going to reveal their blind spots. And you think that's why you're excluded from of these course. Uh, polls I've been well. here since only 2019. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you include me in the survey? Because they don't well, want me to... Because perhaps you're not pulling the numbers enough that's, to reflect. Uh, that's not true. Never true. What do you think your numbers are? 
I'm, I'm, my numbers are definitely better than them. Listen, let me tell you, and let me prove this fact to you. In 2020, there were a little over 6, 12 million people who went to, who voted, right? The voter register had 17 plus. 5 million people did not vote. When Afrobarometer did the survey, they said they didn't have a choice on the ballot. So what happened to the 5 million people? They could have voted and voted for these same people who have given us no result. They did, that didn't happen. So if 5 million people decide not to vote, there's a reason. And the excuse is we don't have somebody on the ballot who could make things happen. Now, I'm the only one who was on the ballot in 2020 who still, who, well, not on the ballot, but yeah. who run and got, got disqualified 2020 right. who is on the ballot today. Doesn't that tell you something? What is this supposed to be telling me? It's telling you that now at least the 5 million people who did not vote mm -hmm. have a choice on the ballot that they're going to vote for. Plus, whoever, whoever else is on the 12 point whatever million that vo voted last time. So we're starting with a credit, huge credit, that just by me being in the race, nobody with the numbers we currently have can do the 50 plus 1. Mm. Simple math. I see, but, but you know, the other independent candidates could say the same. Alan Chabajin could they, say the same. Yeah, but they uh, weren't here. Like five, the point Kwame is... Bidiaka could say the same. He wasn't here 2019. He, he wasn't, but perhaps now that he is... He's what the five million people need, and that's why he and Alan Tremontin show up in the poll and you don't. Yeah, but we talk a different language. So uh, let's t take a look at what Kofi Quarantin is going to do versus what everybody else is going to do. Mm -hmm. Chermanting, I don't even want you to mention Chermanting because he's part of MPP. Listen, you want to really fix the problems we have? If you want to fix the problems we have, then we have to start with one thing. The first we need to start with is 2024 represents something different. What it represents is, is if Ghana wants to move forward, then we have to look at people who have, number one, credibility in terms of performance and people we could trust, mm -hmm. character. Bahumia has a record. Mahama has a record. Chairman Ting has a record. Mm -hmm. There's no character in their record. There's no character in the record. How so? Because they have said things and they have lied. And we have results and we have records to show. Okay. Are you, of course, unless you're not paying attention, Kamini. Mm. But if you're paying attention, you will know that they have said things and it showed up that it was totally different. I see. So I it, just on trust alone, they're out. So now let's go to performance. Mm -hmm. Who has the record in performance? I could prove everything I say. Okay. Okay. And plus, I'm the only one who says we're going to, number one, in mega agenda for Ghana, I'm the only one who says, number one, I'm going to change the constitution. Number two, I'm going to eradicate corruption. Number three, I'm going to institute a national development plan. Number four, I'm going to reduce government by 73%, make it effective, efficient, and functional. And number five, invest $10 billion in agriculture for the next 10 years. Drone-controlled mechanized farming. Who says that? Well, I think on, basically all the candidates are thinking along the same lines. Yeah, but they, they can't explain it. Where are they going to find the money? They can't tell you. They all, they, 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 they're not coming right. along so, the so, same lines. So let's, let's take it a step at a time. Sure. You talked about character mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, trust. Performance, yeah. Uh, and, and performance. Mm -hmm. What is your track record that you come to the table with? Well, I've been a principal's for 24 years with the most regulated industry in the world, the securities industry in the US. Mm -hmm. There's no other agency business more regulated than this. And I have a clean record. My few four are public record, you could pull it out. So that's a record nobody compares with. My background is in engineering, so there is specificity in my thinking. You know, uh, and they don't have it. You, like I said, we have records to show that these guys have failed in the last 32 years. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the three, okay? Um, and nobody's record comes close to mine. Mm. It's a fact. So if, and, and, and plus, who is saying the things that I am saying? Who is saying that they're going to strip down the exemptions that we have of the presidency? Nobody can say that. 
because they want the cushioning, they want the Teflon mm. protection. I'm saying let's strip it. What, what kind of exemptions are you referring to? The presidential exem exemptions. Okay. So that the president has the own, same protection as every other Ghanaian citizen. Oh, right. I'm the only one who says that we're going to, 275 parliamentarians, we're bringing it down to 20. Who said that? 20? Yes. How will that work? Why wouldn't that work? I mean, how would you operationalize that? I okay, want to understand well, how it works. Because work. with all the technologies that we have, Kimini, you have uh, cellular intelligence, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial general intelligence, uh, uh, quantum computing, humanoid ro robots. It allows you f to do things more effectively, efficiently in shorter periods. So why would you need 275 parliamentarians who are still figuring out how to get this thing to work? Do you not see that they can't figure it out? Go outside and you will see everywhere in Ghana, the whole Ghana is like a village. What you're talking about is redemarcating the entire country. Do you... Why do you say redem... Why do you have to... Redem because, it, it, I mean, these 275 mm -hmm. came as a result of the creation of districts. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to, you know, knock it all down to 20, you go, you look, you're looking at the entire process. No, I'm not. You just don't understand. If, 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 if you have... You live in an apartment and you have five rooms mm -hmm. and you decide that you're going to use one room. You don't have to knock the walls down in the other rooms. Why do you have to knock it down? I mean, well, it's easy to say that, but administratively, I'm trying to understand or see the picture how many, of... How many regions do we have? 16, right Bring now. it down to 10, because that's where we were and was working perfectly fine. Okay. 16 makes it administratively more complex, and it's a waste of money. And We haven't seen any result from making it 16 yet, have we? We haven't. You know we haven't. It was just an administrative move that made some people happy but didn't bring any dividends to Ghanaians. Mm. So it's a waste of democracy. We bring it down to 10. You have upper region, lower region. How many parts of the 10 regions do we have? 20. Mm -hmm. you, every region has two parts, upper region, lower region. You put a representative at the upper region, a representative at the lower region. We know people who are there we know what ages they are. So if you know the demographics of the people who live in the region, then you know what their needs are. Simple, simple process. Do we not? I see. No, I, I mean, you, you make it so complicated and it's not. No, I, I, I don't think you get where I'm coming from. Because I get the, what you're coming I mean, from. There will be constitutional requirements in order for you well, to be able course. to Well, of course. You're not just going to get up and that. say you're going to strip everything down. You have to go through uh, uh, the, 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 the hurdles constitutionally. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is, is oh, but it, can it and, be done? And you're going to be using, I, well, I don't know if it, if it could be done. It I'd like to done. see how it, it, it would happen. Of course it will be done. But, but you will be using these same people. You are heavily criticizing. You think they'll let you have your way? Kimini, it's an entrenched position in the Constitution. I don't need the parliament to side with me. It goes to the Ghanaian people, who I'm making a promise to right now, that we're going to change the way Ghana works. You're not going to parliament for the legislators to play soccer with you. No, you're going to the Ghanaian people who you will have loyalty to. You have a jurisdictional and a, 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 a fiduciary obligation to the Ghanaian people, not to people in parliament. They haven't done anything. Have they done something? Tell me. The, this parliament is the most useless parliament. They haven't done anything. If they, were, if they had done something, you tell me, go outside and look at that mess. The whole Ghana is baller, baller everywhere. Not just baller like filth baller, but baller in terms of nothing works. Tell me what works but, in but Ghana. But you still want to be president of this Ghana where nothing but that's works. Why we need, but, but that's why we need to bring somebody who can fix it. Mm. That's why I am the official baller man. I want to talk about you know, your relationship with the, uh, you know, the, the, the rest of the government machinery, particularly the legislature. Uh, you have criticized them a lot. Uh, you have just referred to the, the current parliament as, as useless, many yes. of whom will be returning in the ninth it parliament if you become president. It, Hang on. How do you hope to work with these people? First of all, the loyalty of a legislature is not to a president. 
their loyalty is to their uh, 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 constituents, constituents yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. My loyalty is to the whole of Ghana. So I am going to work for the people of Ghana, just as much as they're going to work for their constituents. Mm -hmm. So now if I were to come in right now, committee, and I said, we're going to build bridges and schools and uh, all the infrastructure you need in this region. Mm -hmm. Do you think a well-thinking legislature is going to say, oh, Kofi, you're not, uh, you're not from my party, so I'm going to, I'm going to block you. Think about it. This is not the person who's going to do a PDS. I'm not here for a PDS or an Ejapadie, so I don't need a rubber stamp from the legislature. But you're going to have to need to build consensus with the legislature but this is for what smooth I'm running of, of your administration. Let me tell you, smooth running for things that we are going to bring to the floor. But what I'm saying is this, smooth running to what extent? If what I'm going to say, if you were drowning, and I come to you and I say to you, Kamini, here is a life jacket. Take the life jacket. Are you going to argue with me that, Kofi, you're not in my party, so I'm not going to take the life? You drown. The responsibility and the fiduciary obligation of a parliamentarian is to their constituents. If I come in and I put something on table in parliament that this is what I think needs to be done, it's to your benefit and it's to make you look good because everything you propose in parliament, you still need the executive office to approve because that's how you get money from finance. Right or right? Mm -hmm. Of course. So if you want to play ball, we play ball. But what I'm saying is, is if the Ghanaian is the person who is going to suffer, then there's no need to play ball because my ideas will be to f serve the people of Ghana. You are responsible for your constituents, and that's why I'm here for. So mm -hmm. there's no, this is something, this is a fallacy that's been created by NPP NDC that, oh, if somebody makes an attempt to become a president, they don't have a majority or minority, they're going to have a hard time working. I mean, that's with not true. It's because there are constitutional requirements that a certain quarter of your ministers must come from MP. What's from, that from, from, with from, from Parliament. Yeah, so, so yeah. what? What's yeah, so, so, so then, if you, at this point, uh -huh. Call the entire parliament useless. The question I was driving us, or where I was going to with that question, is that how are you building consensus so that you can run your government? We will build consensus because, I, listen, if we need, you think the parliament as a whole has been useless. There are people in there that I'm sure would want to do well for Ghana. And we will address this and we will go to them and say, hey, come work. You think somebody's going to say mm -hmm. no to joining our cabinet? I don't think so. I don't think so, because people know what we're about. People know by t that not everybody in parliament, I, I think, want to do bad by Ghanaians. But they don't have a choice because of the system and how it's run. Mm. So even if you want to do good by people, you can't because it's a cartel. Right or right? Mm. It's run like a mafioso cartel in there. So there are people who in there who, with the right leader, with the right president, they will stick their heads up and say, you know what, Kofi, I want to work with you on this thing. You with me? We may not be 100% in agreement, but if it's for the benefit of Ghanaian people, why don't we come together and make mm -hmm. it work? There's no need to say, you know what, I'm going to yeah. butt heads with you because yeah. you are from AXT party and I'm from this part. No, we're working mm -hmm. for one cause, the Ghanaian people. So I don't see that happening. Mm. And if that were to happen anyway, it would be a constitutional crisis. I'm not going to be the loser of that constitutional crisis. I'm the president. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. We're here to represent the people the of people. Ghana for once. We're going to do right by the people of Ghana. I see. And then you say that from 275 MPs, we're going to break it down to uh, Bring it down to 20. 20. Yeah. And, and, I mean, based on the explanation you've given me, holding all other things constant, it would appear that each of the 10 regions you reverse us to mm -hmm. would have two MPs. Mm -hmm. mm. I see. So how, how would that work? Again, I'm trying to understand if so you... So wait, first of all, think about what the prime responsibility, the mandate of a rep is. What is your job? Tell me what you think. Uh, well, they, they, you can't... I'm the one tell you they're useless and you tell me, oh, they have something to do. So you well, tell... I haven't said that. I have contested that. If you call them useless at this point, how are you going to work with them? I will with work them? with them for yeah, those yeah, who no, want to no, work no, with me. I think we've dealt with that. Okay, what good. I want to understand uh -huh. now is these 
20 MPs that you would have. Mm -hmm. I want to see what your the strategy. Yeah, the strategy, the, okay. ro the so, roadmap to, okay. to, so, to, to 20. The roadmap, oh, it's, we're going to go to a referendum. Okay. Okay. It's not going to be obviously in the first term because it would have been in already by the time I go in. But coming into the second, if I get a second, which I know I will get because of the things we're going to do to change mm. the system. So this is not a first a first. No, no, you term. can't come in because you're already mm. in there. You need to uh, work with me here. Well, it gives more clarity. Oh, okay. So it that's why you're changing. Oh, of course. We're not going to come in here and change things because there's a requirement constitutionally you have mm. to go through. So what I'm saying is once I'm in, then these are things I'm going to propose to Ghanaian people because, listen, all you have to do is take a look at them and say, give me one parliamentarian who've won. You tell me if mm. you know one because I can't find them. Who's been exceptional at their post? Give me one. Exceptional. Well, I thought you may have identified a few who would not or who would want to work with you. Well, this is the thing, and this is what one thing, one of the things I always talk about. When the leader is different, the expectation and the performance that comes with people are different. So if you have a lazy leadership, the people become lazy. If you have a leadership that has high expectation of its people, they rise up to the occasion. That's how it works. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? This is why, Kamini, that people leave from Ghana and they say, oh, where do you for Niha for whatever. They go abroad and they are high performance. Right. Kofi, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll look at a few of the other things you, you mm -hmm. promise you will do, including changing the constitution, which you've mentioned so many times already. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. My guest is Kofi Kranting. He is independent presidential candidate in the 2024 race. We are looking at what he brings to the table as we enter the elections on December 7th, 2024. Kofi, thank you so much for sitting with us. A change of the constitution. You are not talking about a review. You're, Why you're, you're a looking review? at a, a complete overhaul? Complete change. Reviews did not work. Did it work? I, see, let me tell you something. One thing that blows my mind is our ability to always go back to things we know have not given us a result and always going to back to it. What has a review done for us? Can you, bless his soul, Atta Mills made an attempt to reform and use all the pretty words. Did it happen? His own people shut it down in parliament. Mm. We are going to change the constitution. And the reason why it needs to be a change because the constitution is a holistic document. Mm -hmm. When you change one part, it has to be consistent with all other parts. That's why it's a total change. Are there specific things that you, you're looking to tackle? Sure. When you t one of the things, appointment of the IGP, electoral commissioner, accountant general, and all these other top positions does not have to come from the president. Mm. It has to be something done by a public service commission working in tandem with the specific agencies to pick the leaders. You, you can't have a president appoint these people and all the other 6,000 other positions that goes into executive in running the country. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Mm. You see? And I uh, talked about the exemptions, um, the Article 71 and, uh, 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 has to go. Mm. Um, we don't need ex gratia. Uh, Total waste of our time and money. I see. Uh, uh, of course, uh, if listen, the only way we are at 760 billion cities of debt, nobody has a plan to roll that back. It's going to get worse and worse. I'm the only one who has a plan to roll that back. And you're not going to do it in thin air. You're going to do it by making, bringing the axe down. Mm, I'm going to ask you what your plan is to reverse that debt. But sure. let, let's stick with the issue on, on the Constitution just mm -hmm. for a little bit. Kofi, have you seen any of the white papers on the Constitutional mm -hmm. Review? I see. And you're not impressed by anything in it? It's not being impressed. It hasn't happened. Until it happens, it doesn't mean anything. And that's one of the things that we, we are people who we get moved by, oh, so effort. Effort is not, I don't come from effort. Mm -hmm. I come from results. So if it, there's no specificity in how it happens and not getting the result, it means nonsense. Get it out of here. 
Well, I'm asking because it, it would seem that when you look at all the reviews that we have gone through, um, your, your mind seems to be in the right place with, with those reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you identified, there were hurdles in the way of implementing, implementing those reviews. How are you planning to maneuver those hurdles? There, there was no hurdle. There was no hurdle at no. all? Okay. There was no hurdle. It was not done properly. You see, a lot of people, uh, uh, the reason why the review was shut down in the last constitution review was because it was not, in the constitution, it tells you the pathway to take to change the constitution. Right. If you do not do it exactly like that, then a group of parliamentarians can shoot it down in parliament and say, because you have not taken the right course, mm you haven't met the legal requirement for this to happen. Okay, so what is the course that you will be taking? I, I want the, to understand what the constitutional requirement no, is. No, it, it, you have to do it the right way, but what I'm saying is this, um, it, it goes to the speaker, the speaker starts the process, it's read in parliament, mm. then it goes to the uh, Council of State, then Council of State uh, nibbles mm -hmm. over it for 30 days, then it goes to uh, uh, the uh, um, um, it goes to the uh, uh, it's it's reviewed at the Gazette Gazette Gazette. Mm -hmm. I always forget that word. So it's reviewed at Gazette for three months. Then it comes back to Parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, speaker looks it over. It's read again. Then it's given to the electoral commissioner. The electoral commissioner starts processes for the 40, 70, 40% 40 of the voter roll and 70% agreement once it goes through, and then it comes back and it's made into law. And what did the others do then, in all that you have mentioned now? Because there are four ways to change a constitution. You could do it through um, uh, taking signatures, or you could do it through, uh, it's called the um, uh, Constitutional Convention, uh, and there you could do it through a review and there is a legislative uh, a process that you do it through and it didn't go through the right way in terms mm. of the review and that's why it was shut down. Mm, I see. Let's move away from that. I want us to talk about uh, your plan to reverse the debts that the country mm. owes at this point. What is it? How are you hoping to achieve simple. that? Simple. Mm. Very simple. We cannot do anything with our debt because we don't have the income. Simple common sense. We don't have any industries, do we? I don't know of one. Everything in here is foreign made. I don't know anything. I went to Mokala two days ago and I was in tears. Everything in Mokala, China. Everything. Even the Ghana support, 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 China. Why? Where are the leaders? Your leaders, the 275 people that you want to protect. Where are they? They should take a walk to Mokola and see Cantamanto. Nothing is going to made. Nothing. It's a pity. And then you come back and you say, oh, unemployment. We're... Nonsense. Well, we don't have industry. So the first thing you do is the output from agriculture, we feed the agro-based industries. So you can add value. When you add, add value, we use for our needs and whatever the surplus is, we export. When you export, you get foreign exchange reserves. When you get the foreign exchange reserves, you, get three th you do three things with it. Number one, you pay down the debt. Mm -hmm. Number two, you expand your industry base. So you go from the agriculture first level base to domestic level, and you start producing everything on the domestic level. And then the third thing is you put the extra money into your central bank, so if you need Forex, that's where you go. You don't go to Tudu. Mm. You know where Tudu is? Mm. Uh, that's where they do the, all the Forex, right? right. And Ghana, Ghana Bank, they go and photocopy a CD, get the CDs and buy Forex on the street. They push a lot of CD on the street and it tanks our CD against the dollar. How do you build an economy like that? And then you come back and the nerve of you to go back to IMF. Common sense should tell you, number one, you have high debt that you cost. Your inflation, you don't produce any damn thing. That's why your inflation is that high, because you don't control the prices on the street. And then you have high debt, and you don't have any uh, 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 exchange. You don't have any surplus. You don't have any surplus. 
if you don't have a surplus, obviously, wh where's the foreign exchange reserve coming from? What mm -hmm. is it that you think that the current administration, previous administrations, didn't do right with value addition of our Greek that you will be doing differently? Okay, so first of all, I don't see any result. I don't know if you see result from where you sit, but I don't see result. So regardless of what they do and how you term it, the bottom line is if you don't get the result, then there's something wrong that you're doing. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's where we start from. So the first, like I've said, these guys don't have the mental capacity. They don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And we have allowed them to sit here for 32 years, and we, they back again, and promises after promises that they're going to, this time it's going to be different. In the process, they're giving away refrigerators and stoves and everything just to induce you to vote for them because they know they don't have it. It's not that difficult, Kamini. Mm. It's not. It's not that complex. This is not like brain surgery, blindfolded brain surgery. This is simple stuff. If we do not have the factories, first of all, this thing that you're talking about is uh, planting for food. And have mm -hmm. you seen one? Have you seen one? They just used it to scrape money. Why is the government left agriculture to individuals and not making it a Ghana project? Right. So, so then, what's your plan to ensure that governance does not sit at the presidency alone or in Accra alone? Yeah, it, it's centralized. Mm -hmm. So you decentralize. The way we're going to have our local governments run is our local governments are going to run as separate entities. They're going to be like Fortune 500 companies. You're going to employ your own uh, regional executives and they're mm -hmm. going to run this like companies. You see what I'm saying? So that's how we're going to run it. And we're going to give you the necessary apparatus, uh, the skill sets, uh, the development skills, and all the ingredients to make the unit work. But you are responsible for employing your own people. And right. at the beginning of the year, you tell us what your goals are. You don't hit your goals. At the end of the year, you are fired. Mm. You with me? So you have specific goals you need to meet based on what is current in, on your, in your region. If you have gold, then we give you what you need to do with the gold. If you have uh, yam, what you need to do, the expectation. If you're in the north, mm. you have grains. We, we need this quantity of grains you need to give us. We'll give you the support, everything you need. We're not going to leave you to do the farming all by mm. yourself. Okay. And then as the income comes and you give us a budget, we will see how consistent your budget is to the amount of revenues you're able to raise. Mm. If it's more than that, we cut it down. If it's less than that, we add for that you're able to. But in terms of all the big ticket items, because we're doing a national development plan, mm. the government will take care of all the big ticket items like the roads, the hospitals, the schools, all the big infrastructure will mm. be government. Local government will be mainly preservation and maintenance, which we don't do. Mm. No way, Ghana, no pr preservation, no maintenance. Everything is left to rot. Mm. Even the buses we bought, even the ambulances we bought just a couple of years ago are rotten now. You, you, you mentioned gold earlier, uh, mm. you, which means that your decentralization will also ch touch minerals. Uh, how are you going to rope in you know, the contracts we've signed already, the companies who have already been given these concessions in these areas? Okay, so a couple of things. The moment we get in, we're going to investigate all these companies with the concessions to make sure that they have met their regulatory requirement in terms of reclamation. Mm -hmm. If you have defaulted on that, then guess what? Uh, we're going to call your license. You with me? If you haven't, then we're going to sit with you, take a look at the contract and make terms. But for the most part, Kamini, we don't want everybody to be able to mine. They have mutilated the lands. They have poisoned our waters. We need to let the lands heal so we can heal. You with me? First of all, we're not even getting the income in gold. Somebody else is making the income and it's not Ghana. Mm -hmm. So there's no point this big idea of Galamse is helping us, the gold is helping us, it's not helping us. We're not getting any income from it. So what I'm saying is before Galamse, Ghana was doing okay. Right. And we could do okay if we focus on what we need to do, which is renewable stuff, cassava, cocoa. We have left cocoa to rot. Mm -hmm. We haven't supported the farmers. So how are you getting the revenues from cocoa? You're not. 
And you, just based on the revenues from cocoa alone, we could support Ghana from cassava. It's a disgrace to have 275 parliamentarians and import corn and cassava. Do you know we import corn and cassava? That's why we don't, poultry is dead in Ghana. Mm, I see. So, so what, what then will you do about community mining? Because there's an appreciable you know, level not, of community there's, mining. There's no need for community mining. Okay. And the reason why there's no need, why do, for, see, I like to go to the root cause. I'm an engineer. Mm -hmm. What is the root cause? The root cause is people do not have jobs to feed themselves. If they got jobs to feed themselves, then they will wean off the mining because it's a dangerous thing. People die from it. A lot of these young guys die. So what I'm saying is, is why don't you give them another source of income? And there are so many agriculture is the answer. I'm going to make Ghana the agricultural hub of the world, not of West Africa or Africa, the mm -hmm. world. I see. We're putting in $10 billion every year for the next 10 years. Right. Every year when you take office. Uh, oh, yeah. Where will you get the $10 billion from? What happened to all the money they stole? Who stole? People who have stolen the money. Okay. The past governments. For the mm -hmm. last 67 years, you know how much money Ghana has lost? In the last 32 years, we out $96 billion. Billion. $96 billion according to their numbers, mm. and then all the other extras. You're going to go after these monies? Heck yeah. Okay. We have to get it all. We're going to go back to our... You see, that's what I'm saying, community. Let's pay attention here. If you don't get these monies, you're going back to IMF. We don't have the infrastructure to generate the type of income we need to build Ghana. Everybody who's talking about, oh, we're going to build Ghana, we're going to do this, they're lying. They don't know what they're talking mm. about. They don't, where is the money coming from? Nobody's going to hand you the money. Mm. So you're going to have to go back to IMF. So, so this 90 bi 96 billion cities mm -hmm. or dollars? Dollars. Dollars mm -hmm. in, in people's pockets. Yeah. And you're going to get them when you come to office. And that's Heck what you yeah. use to fund the government. Uh, Is no. that realistic? No, no. We, uh, of course it's realistic. We're getting our monies. Whatever we get, we still can roll. There are so many other ways that we can make money. But I'm saying that the bulk of the money is people's pockets and it's coming out of people's pockets. And you're going to jail on top. Mm, I see. What are the other ways you're raising money for your government? 30% of everybody who works in Ghana, only th about 30% pay taxes. The rest of them don't pay taxes because we don't even know they exist. Because we don't have an integrated national ID and address system. So when you have an integrated national ID and address system, you port the numbers from that into, onto what we call a national data repository system. You're able to identify every Ghanaian and how much they make. And then you're able to tax them based on how progressive tax and how much they make. Not this ridiculousness that MPP, NDC go by indiscriminately taxing people. Mm. You can't indiscriminately tax people. It kills lifestyle. That's why only 30%, about 30% of people in Ghana make less than five cities a day. As I speak to you now, 7,317,555 families, household families, are in a major uh, 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 poverty crisis. Poverty crisis. Seven million. Hmm. Households Seven. in this country. Yes. And this is not my numbers. Guess what? This is the, 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 the statistical numbers. Ghana Statistical Service. Hmm. Seven million three hundred seventeen thousand five hundred fifty-five. Multi-dimensionally poor. Hmm. And you're going to alleviate them or elevate them from... If you don't have food, yeah. ten things. Housing. Healthcare, mm -hmm. employment, education, transportation, telecommunication, security, recreation, markets, and a functional central business district. If we do not build a country, an economy that builds these 10 things, people can never elevate from where they are now, which is a low uh, 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 low income mm. to middle class. It will never happen. And we need a middle class to be able to create 
what we call the economic combustion to, number one, absorb the 760 billion CD debt and elevate people into competencies to start generating healthy income, not the borrowing income thing. Do, do we have a good enough or big enough middle class right now? We don't have a middle class. We don't have a middle class at no. all. Our middle class is in the diaspora. Mm. And the boneheads will not allow for the middle cl class to come to Ghana because they don't want anybody to challenge them in their politics. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we have a middle class who they've exiled for the most part abroad. I champion ROPA, Representation right. of the People's Amendment Act, mm -hmm. to get them to cause Ghanaians abroad to be able to vote, and it was shut down. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they haven't implemented it. Mahama came to Worcester in 2014 and lied to Ghanaians that he was going to implement ROPA. It, hasn't, it, it, it did not happen. Mm -hmm. Kufuado came to New York University. I was there too, Africa House, right. and said, oh, we're going to ROPA this, ROPA that. It didn't happen. They all lied. And then they have the nerve to come back to us and say, oh, we will want to come back and run the country. Really? We've got to be crazy to be voting for these guys. I'm telling you. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll finish our discussion with Kofi Kranting. Don't go away. Welcome back. My guest is independent presidential candidate Kofi Kuranting. Kofi, again, thank you so much for talking to us. I see on your uh, flyer the plan to reduce wastage. Uh, you have one building for all ministries, all the 20 ministries in one building. Ten, oh. not 20. Ten. Yeah, because it's going to be, well, that, that would be the regional ministers. Would regional you have, ministers? Would no you regional have, ministers. There won't, be no, there won't be regional ministers why, for why each of the need, 10 regions? Why do you need regional ministers? Okay, so these ministers will be, will be what? Agriculture. Okay. Energy. Education. Employment and entrepreneurial development. Finance. Foreign affairs. Trade and industry. Interior. Justice. Health. 10. And then you're done. I see. So then you have all these 10 ministries in one building. Yep. One building. One building. What, what, does, that, does that building exist right now? Yeah. The communication building. We can, uh, listen, even e, the EC building can have all these ministries in there. Go in there. They have all the place lit up, air conditions blowing, nobody in there. And you call this efficiency? Come on. We don't even understand efficiency. We, we don't get it. We don't understand. Uh, hey, Ratis. Mm. Go to the ministries. Have you been to the ministries before? Mm -hmm. You go there 10 or a.m. Somebody's in watching, reading newspapers. The other person is on TikTok. Well, uh, uh, what's up? Chilling. Uh, you call this working? Mm -hmm. you, uh, seriously. Uh, when I go there and I see them, I, I, uh, listen, you can have... Two people run the whole EC. Two. Mm. Two people. Because, listen, the genius is when EC, hey, EC comes into effect every four years, correct? Right. So three years, three and a half years, you don't have a need for a full staff. Not, not entirely. Exactly. So you can have you can just have people come in and work for you on a part-time basis, and then when it gets to three years, three and a half years, close to elections. First of all, we've made the situation very tough because we have not implemented the things that will make this thing run seamlessly. I mean, so uh, what, what, if you go what, to what will those things be? Because while they may not be um, need for electoral commission's presence throughout uh, you know, the rest period after an election. Things happen during those periods. Why do elections we have to, and... Why do we have to regenerate an, uh, a, a voter registry every year? <laughs> why do we have to do that? If you, community, you 17 years right now, we had a national data repository system. At age 18, you automatically port from the 
the, the uh, uh, data, national database onto the electoral registry. It's an HTML code. How difficult is that? You know how much it costs? You know how much it costs? Tell cost? me. It's like sending an email. Oh, gosh, man. This is ridiculous. Mm, I see. But I, I can understand that, you know, there could be poor service. Um, people's attitude towards work could be um, poor. But juxtaposing that to almost cutting down everything. Everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. You still think you would have the efficiency you need to Actually, run. it would be more efficient. Because you cut down everything. And so these, so uh, this one, hang on, this one building for all ministries. Mm -hmm. How many people are you seeing working for all these 10 ministries that you put there? Okay. So let, let me flip it so you could get a perspective. With the thousands of people they have in there now, we are 760 billion in debt. We are 760 billion in debt. So what's the use of all the people that we have? That's where I start from. Mm -hmm. There's no, you haven't been able to prove to me that there is an inherent direct benefit for having all these people. Right. So I'm going to cut them and put them into agriculture. And you're going to cut them to, to what? What will be the ideal number of people to work in these 10 ministries? We, we don't know yet, but we know. That's why I said I'm going to reduce government by 73% minimum. Mm. My an initial analysis is 75%, but I just did a 73. Okay. But 75%, we could reduce it. And when you go to the ministry, let's, yes, two days ago was at Passports, the and you go in the guru boys, everybody, hey, uh, you know, why? Why can't we have a system? We've always had but deals. But there, there is a system. Have you used that system before? Well, the, the last time I had passports done for friends, family members who came from, we went to the passport center at Circle. The you, digital you, center, Digital yes. center. And you know what blew my mind? There is an office that does all the work that you need to prepare you for the passport. Mm -hmm. And it's not owned by Ghana. Why is that? That upsets me. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. If there is a process that you need to conclude, to complete, to qualify you to get a passport, then it's a legitimate path to obtaining a passport. Why haven't they included that in the process of getting a passport? Why have they taken that out and given to somebody on the side to give that service mm. in the passport building? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a fair question, but I, I guess that's the digital center. But when you go to the other centers, the people who work there work for the government. I'm not saying they don't work for the government, mm. but there are people who work there who don't work for no, the no, So what I'm saying is that when you go to the other centers, but why perhaps is it, it is the di digital center. And I'm saying, fair question you're asking, mm -hmm. but just to clarify the conversation we're having for anyone who is listening, mm -hmm. when you go to the other centers, they, are not, owned by, they are not owned by a private uh, a no, company. No, the passport center itself is owned by Ghana, but there are supporting services like photocopying, like uh, copies of forms and stuff why isn't that all part of the process do you see mm -hmm. where money is seeping out it doesn't seem like a very smart government Real. to me no first for business class travel for officials no v8 for officials 95 percent reduction in diplomatic missions why are you interested in that what's the purpose of a diplomatic mission mm -hmm. the purpose of a diplomatic mission is to have a trade desk you know what a trade desk is for mm -hmm. so that they could find out about everything this country is doing that we think we can do to also make money and get the benefits. Tell me about one trade desk in all the 55 um, missions. Uh, 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 missions that we have. Not one. Not one. Why have it then? Uh, simple question. I just asked. Oh, the, let's flip. I just asked the questions. <laughs> Kamini, uh, listen, everything I am saying to you I have researched. I have traveled almost every spot in the world. And you plan to abolish company boards as well. Uh, of, oh, of, gosh. That's a big one. Company boards. What do company boards do for you? See, back when we didn't have the internet, we didn't have a way of tapping into some external 
mastermind to find out things. You had boards to sit and say, oh, you know what, we have thought about eating kinky instead of binku. The board comes in with all the wisdom and says, well, uh, the uh, benefits of eating kinku versus binku versus kinky is da 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 da, then come to help you plan. You could get every information at your fingertips. But boards are everywhere in the world. Oh, is so, there anywhere in the world that are no boards? Wait, so I, I, I mean, I'd like to hear a better reason for why you want to abolish company boards. It costs money, and you have not proven to me that these boards have been profitable. So what's the need for the board whose primary objective is to make these boards more profitable? Am I making sense? See, for everything that we do, you have to be able to prove to me that there is a reason for doing it. Mm. Kofi, all of these things you're saying, um, you have the vision, you, you have the mission in mind. Do you have people oh, yeah. alongside with you who hold the same vision and mission? No, we have the mastermind. We actually have the mastermind. I'm so glad you asked me that. Mm. We have the mastermind. And the mastermind is into you? The, into what? The, the mastermind is into you. I thought you would be the mastermind of no, that vision. No, no, no. Oh, my mm. God. I don't have any brains. I, my brains are small. Mm. I have a mastermind. See, the beauty of a leader is not to know everything. The beauty of a leader is to have the humility to know that you don't know it all. You bring in competencies that you assemble and you call that a mastermind. Those are the people who design the master class. The master class is who develops the master key. With the master key, you build systems. And with the systems, you build structures. And the structures sets up the standards that becomes the success models that you run your organization with. Okay, so make it simple for me. You, simple is we're going to make it work. <laughs> we're going to get the results. <laughs> That's simple. Do you have the people? Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, do. Like-minded people oh, yeah. who are alongside. Bigger-minded. Okay. They are, they are, so they it, are. Means that, it means that you have, you, you have in mind already a picture of what your ministers would look like, what your mini who, who your ministers are. Do you have we that? Know. I see. We know. I see. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna show Ghanaians uh, in, a, in a, maybe a week or so we show Ghanaians. I look forward to that. Thank you so much for coming. Are you going to invite us back? <laughs> we, we look forward to seeing you there. Give me any. <laughs> Kofi Granting is independent candidate uh, for the presidential race in the 2024 elections. My name is Kemeni Amano. This is Hot Issues. We'll see you same time next week. Bye-bye.